pleased to be around um, and also with a lot of humbleness. The joy, of course, uh, comes from the fact that uh, diplomatic life may sound very posh and glitzy, but as a matter of fact, a lot of that happens in an office, writing uh, speaking points for ministers or state secretaries, uh, <coughs> doing dull reporting and all of that, so you can imagine. But events like this event tonight, these are really the events that make my life as a diplomat very special. And I thank you for being with you and I thank you for the invitation. Basically, whatever you have said already, Kathleen took a bit away from what I wanted to say. Um, you have mentioned, for instance, that I worked on Somalia. I worked before Somalia, I worked on Sudan. So for most of my now 18 year diplomatic career, I worked exactly on crisis prevention, on conflict resolution, on the things that you have also mentioned that were so important to Heinrich Böll and his, his work. But um, I will get back to that in a moment because not everything that you have said or not what you have said didn't take away everything I wanted to say. A little bit is left and I will get back to that in a moment. But you also mentioned the questions around otherness, um, dealing with otherness in our lives, uh, seeing people that are different and treating them with respect. Um, when we came here with our three children in the car, we were discussing what would have taken a person like Heinrich Böll to a place like Eckel Island. And the kids were thinking like, yeah, it's very beautiful, of course. <clears throat> and then we tried to take them back to life as it may have been in the 1950s in Cologne and life as it may have been in the 1950s around here. And um, definitely we would see a lot of things being different, a lot of otherness around. Um, maybe culturally between the urban life and the rural life and maybe very many other things. So um, I think that this may have been uh, what, or at least that's how I tried to explain it to my kids, that may have been something that attracted uh, Heinrich Böll here. Looking at the world today and looking also at my work today and the way I experience Ireland, yes, uh, things uh, have changed a lot. So when I talk to visitors coming in and they have never been to Ireland and maybe they have heard of the, uh, the Irish Journal, I, t I tell them, if you have read it, everything is completely different now. So don't forget about it, but just turn it around in your head. So maybe superficially looking at uh, the way Ireland has developed, maybe we could think that 90% are the same, especially when you look at Dublin and compare Dublin of today to Cologne of today, for instance. But the longer I live here, and I've been here only for eight months, so much still needs to be discovered. But the longer I live here, and of course I'm curious, I try to find the things that are not obvious, I try to go underneath the superficial observations, I realize, okay, there is still things that remain distinct and that are different. And this is, of course, what makes my job very interesting. But this is, of course, something that uh, can be inspiring. It can also be annoying sometimes, that's also possible. Um, and especially if you look at the way uh, the general public in Ireland sees world politics, maybe 90% uh, are really the same way as we in Germany would see it, or if any generalization is allowed. But still there is a 10% that are different. And that's of course what makes my work interesting. I want to see it, I want to understand it, I want to understand why. I want to explain it to those who come visiting. And, and that's the best thing of being a diplomat, I'm, I feel challenged in my own way of looking at the world. Because um, things that sound completely weird if you look at it from a purely Berlin or German perspective, the moment you dive into a different society, uh, things are not that clear any longer. Things are more into the shades of grey where you think like, yeah, okay, I thought that was completely stupid, but looking at it closer, looking at it from a different perspective, I really get where you are coming from. So, yes, it's not the same as it was many, many years ago. Things have changed and yes, there is a sense of assimilation. Young people, they move, they study here, they study there. And that, of course, leads to a certain degree of assimilation. However, and I think that's a challenge of the modern world, to maintain a certain distinction and to continue to develop it and um, at the same time not to remain static with that distinction. To develop it and to develop it with, and that's what you said, and I'm picking on what you said, to do that in a 
mutually respectful way to accept otherness, to be inspired by it, to feel challenged by it, but to respond to that challenge in a constructive way. And looking at the world as it is today, we see that way too often that just doesn't be within human capacity to do that. So let's feel inspired, let's feel challenged in a positive way when we go to other places, when we meet other people, when we move to other countries, when we knock at our neighbor's door maybe, and try to see the distinction as something that can take us to the next level and uh, not something that we need to judge or change or alter in any way. This, and I'm quoting now, which is very easy for a diplomat, I'm quoting now the foreign minister of this country, the Tornischte, who very much surprised me in a seemingly dull speech at the beginning. But <laughs> then I thought, wait a minute, this is something I really didn't understand. I, go, I went back and I asked some colleagues around. They also said, I didn't really get what he was saying there. What he said was, he was, um, he mentioned the Blasket Islands, the Blaskets, and a certain form of literature that uh, had developed there, and that some of it was really inspired by uh, Boccaccio's De Camerona. So even if we are talking about very distinct you know, areas, very distinct um, um, philosophical landscapes, the Blasket Islands on the one hand, Renaissance, uh, it, Florence uh, on the other hand, there is something that can mutually inspire, as different as it may be. And uh, then I thought like, wow, small things like this, small comparisons like this, small intellectual challenges like this, where everybody thinks like, what did I not just hear now? <laughs> this is really something that I would hope will happen also during this weekend. And I'm pretty sure because to whomever colleague I talk to has ever attended, like my current ambassador and the previous ambassador that many may remember still, Ms. Potzel, who was my boss in Berlin before I came here, um, that's what they all told me. You will love it. You will enjoy it. You will really take something out of it. And looking at your faces, I think that's the expectations you all do have. And some of you may have had already the experience of it before. And um, taking this into mind, I'm very, very pleased really to be with you. And I'm very, very pleased to be opening officially the Heinrich Böll Weekend. And um, I wish you really a very, very fruitful exchange of views. Feel inspired, feel challenged, and enjoy. Thank you very much.